Right lads, so today we'll be looking at faulting, goes hand in hand with what we mentioned yesterday as part of our revision, we're looking at the causes, the parts and the features, again if there's something you need to take down here, pause the video, take it down, if you need to get me on, on uh, for a comment or a question, get me on Classroom, okay, uh, other than that you've got plenty to do with this, okay, uh, so we're looking here at faulting, we're looking at the causes, features and parts, again, cause is very similar to what causes our folding. Folding, the main force of deformation is compression, uh, but for faulting, um, compression, tension and shearing are all the forces that are going to uh, cause faulting to occur. Okay, so compression is going to shorten and squeeze the earth's crust. It's found at convergent plate boundaries. When compression happens enough, it will cause the fold to snap and bend and break so much that a little crack or a fault line will be created and we refer to that as an over thrust fault so we would have looked or mentioned that yesterday the second type of force that would be uh, active in the formation of faults is tension so when the rock is stretched or elongated and we find it at divergent plate boundaries and that's going to cause uh, our faults And again, our final type of force that's going to deform the Earth's crust is shearing. Shearing is found at transform plate boundaries. Um, it's when uh, our plates slip past each other um, and you're looking at something like a strike slip fault being created uh, when you get this type of deformation process. Okay, so how often do I think this is coming up? Just again, you know, folding and faulting, they, you know, they can come up as often as they like, I suppose, really. I said yesterday that, you know, this is the guy to be watching, really, uh, for folding. In terms of faulting, yeah, it's just as likely it hasn't come up since 2.15. So I would say it's definitely one to watch. We are focusing on our physical geography, so we need to know that as well as possible. So it's definitely one to watch. Faults, so what are faults? Faults experience huge pressure and fractures or cracks in the rock. They're formed by all three processes of rock deformation, compression, tension and shearing. If the fracture involves any movement, it's called a fault. So it's a crack in the earth's surface. If there's movement on that crack where you get an earthquake, that is a fault line. They can be centimeters in size to kilometers in size. Faults can usually uh, happen in groups, they can happen on their own, but they usually happen in groups that are parallel to each other. In other words, they never intersect with each other. So fault lines will happen like this, parallel to each other. Okay, running in parallel but not touching each other. Then I've got my different forces here, okay. So obviously here I've got my compression. Plates colliding, they collide so much that the, the rock folds and buckles and breaks, an overthrust fault. Then I've got my tension, and then I have my shearing. Okay, so there are my different forces that would be active. Parts, parts of fault lines. Uh, again, probably the most important one to know here is the scarp. Okay, heave and throw, yeah, be aware of them that they're parts in the fault line. Uh, but scarf is probably the one that, that comes up most often in the short questions. It's the vertical cliff formed by the displacement of the rock strata. So in other words, your escarpment, okay, that we would have talked about in regional geography and stuff like that, that there is your scarf. It's the vertical cliff formed by the block of the Earth's crust moving upwards or downwards, depending on whether you have compression or, or tension. So there are the different parts. Okay, so I'll give you a couple of seconds to pause it on that. Next up, we have three types of faults that can be created depending on whether you have compression, shearing, or tension. So you've got normal faults, reverse faults, or tear faults, okay? So the first one we have is our, our uh, normal fault, okay? Uh, NFT, no effing talking, no effing talking in class. Normal fault is going to be created by tension. The Earth's crust is going to be separated, divergent plate boundaries, um, and the Earth's crust is going to slip down relative to the earth around it. Reverse faults, RFC, rugby, rugby football club, reverse fault compression. So when two pieces of, of, of crust are compressed uh, so much so that a fault occurs, the block of land in between two faults can pop up and create a feature known as a horse or a black mountain. So that's our reverse faults. And finally, then we have our tear faults, where we have our horizontal movement of the earth's crust. Um, this is your strike slip fault, tear fault, whatever you want to call it. 
Um, so the Earth's crust is horizontally displaced, whereas in the other two, normal and reverse, it's vertically uh, displaced. It's either pushed up or it slips down, one or the other. So let's look at our normal faults. Normal faults are a result of tension, okay? Uh, NFT, no flipping talk in the class, okay? Normal fault, tension. Rock layers uh, are pulled apart. The movement is vertical. You can find it in Kings Court and County Cavan. Um, preserving gypsum beds from erosion. So gypsum is mined in Kings Court, County Cavan. And the only reason they can mine it and know it's there is because you've had this downward slip of a, a block of the Earth's crust because of tension, okay? feature that's created by this process is a rift valley and a rift valley is also known as a graben and I always remember a rift valley or a graben is G for gap G for graben here's your gap between the two pieces of crust so G for gap G for graben you can see the movement of the earth's crust is downwards why because you have one piece of crust pulling right the other pulling left my fault lines there are parallel to each other, not touching each other. So that block of crust or earth there slips down. Okay, and it creates what we call a rift valley. We've done one of these already when we looked at the uh, African Rift Valley in East Africa uh, with the creation of the, the, the Dead Sea and um, the, 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 the Straits um, of, of, of the, at the Gulf of Aden. Um, we've actually mentioned this before when we did play tectonics. All right, so that's the feature that will be created. There it is in, in West Africa or East Africa, our Rift Valley. Next one we have is our reverse faults, RFC, reverse fault compression. Okay, the movement again is vertical, but this time because two pieces of earth are being forced together, um, the block of earth along the fault lines is popping up relative to the landscape around it, okay? Um, this occurs as a result of a reverse fault or overthrust fault. Um, we've mentioned that in yesterday's class. Go back and check that if you need to. You see an example running from Killarney to Mallow whereby the sandstone has been pushed up on top of the limestone and that helps create the Munster Ridge and Valley type landscape. Feature that would be created by this is our block mountain, also known as a horst. How do I know or remember my horst? H for height, H for horst. Okay, and the mountain is high. That's how I remember that. Okay, so again, this time because of compression, two pieces of crust are being forced together. My parallel fault lines, they never meet. Okay, there's pressure along that, that area and it forces the block of land along here to, to pop upwards relative to the land around it. Um, and examples of that which we see in Ireland, one good example would be Ben Bulbin in County Sligo. So Ben Bulbin is a horse. Um, Uluru or Ayers Rock in, in Australia would be another good example. Um, and, and would be one example that we see there in, in the west of Ireland. There's Ben Bulbin. And would be a horse or a black mountain. Tear faults is the last type of fault we need to talk about. It's a vertical fracture where one block is displaced horizontally to the other. The Lenan Fault in Donegal is part of the Great Wester or the Great Glen Fault in Scotland. It's estimated that the section of crust has moved southwesterly for about 100 kilometres. And one feature we see of this we've studied before is the San Andreas Fault Line. Two pieces of crust moving in the same direction, in this case at different paces, one a little bit faster than the other. It's left a visual scar along the landscape, um, and that's your San Andreas fault line. So that's pretty much it then in terms of notes for today. Um, a couple of short questions there if you want to, to, to pause the thing and have a look at it, that's fine by me. You can see there the dates and, and the years in which they've come up. You can go back and have a look at them there. Yourself, you can see though that the short questions they do come up from time to time, but they're all very, very similar. This is the type of question that you should be aiming to do. Last time Falcon came up, it was 2015. You did this question yesterday as well, but you looked at it from the point of view of falling. Today, I'm asking you to look at it from the point of view of Falcon. Other than that, guys, um, you've got plenty of work to do. Um, we'll talk soon. If you need to get me, you can get me on the classroom.